Have you ever heard of Joe Rogan? Maybe you heard of this thing called cancel culture. Can you be a Christian and be pro-choice? Listen, all of that is going to be entailed in today's special edition of Hope Today, Life in a post roll World. We've got Keith Young back with us from Vision for Life and our very, very special guest. You might have saw him on Joe Rogan. His name is Seth Dillon. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a fantastic show. You are not going to want to miss it. We are going to tackle some tough questions and we're going to give you the answers. Stay tuned because life in a post roll world, this special edition of Hope Today starts now. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this very special edition of Hope Today, Life in a post roll World. I'm J. Anthony Gilbert alongside my beautiful wife, Tiffany Gilbert, and we also have our very special guest with us, Thank Keith you. Young Thanks. from Vision for Life. Good us. to have all okay. y'all with us today. Yes, we got Wonderful to be back. Here. Yeah, Wonderful it's to be good. Back. It's good. And I'm so excited. First of all, I know we're going to get into a little bit more about what's happening there at Vision for Life, but we've got a special guest today. Yes, we Two do. Two special guests. Two special guests, <laughs> yeah. but one we haven't met yet. And listen, he is amazing. He's a major voice in pro-life. And one of the things that I love about him is that he's not afraid to speak the truth. He does not care what people say, think, whatever. He is going to speak the truth. And you know what? I love being around yeah. people that like that. Amen. I mean, it really encourages me. It pushes me. And it continues to, um, you know, really show me the importance of standing up and speaking the truth as well. Amen. We live in a day and an hour, ladies and gentlemen. We have to refuse to be refused and deny to be denied. Yes. You've got to stand for something. We've made a decision to stand for life. Come hell or high water, we're going to be here in Jesus' name. And the purpose of this show is to educate, empower you, and to mobilize you, to get you off of the front row and to get on to the front lines. You can't be a pro-life closet person anymore. You've got to get out of the closet. It's time to come out. It's time I'm to come coming out. out. You've got to make a decision. I'm coming out and I'm going to be, right. I'm going to stand for life in Jesus' name. And you know what, Keith, it's so great to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me back. I truly appreciate it. Amen. Enjoy What's having. happening in Vision for Life? We know we got a big gala coming up, but give we people do. a little bit of a taste. You were on uh, last month, but you're on again. And give them a little right. taste of what you guys are doing and what's coming up sure. with you guys. So Vision for Life, just as a reminder for those who may not have seen it, but what we do is we provide financial grants to pregnancy medical centers so that they can advertise to abortion vulnerable mm -hmm. women. And the importance of that is that if you get an abortion vulnerable woman into a pregnancy medical center where they get lots of love and ultrasound tests that they need, that eight out of 10 times they're gonna have the baby. Eight out of 10. That, is, that is a key number for yeah. everyone to really understand because when you have an 80% success rate with that, that means a heck of a lot. There's a lot of babies that are being saved and then going on with generational impact. It is, and we have seen that firsthand. We have seen the mother look on the ultrasound and say, I am keeping my baby, Absolutely. so it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we so thank you. We are one of the uh, few in the area. I don't know if you're allowed to mention that now, but I don't know if you can mention some of the centers that you help, including Absolutely. our own. Yeah. Absolutely, we good. work with six different centers, three in Pittsburgh, of course, one with you, and we also work with Women's Choice, Choice Network and Choices. Yes. Then we have a uh, couple in Philadelphia that we work with, Hope Pregnancy Center, and also um, Alpha Care, and then the one in Cleveland is that we work with is uh, the Cleveland Pregnancy Center. Mm. So, and it is interesting that, especially with Philadelphia, why we're there is that 40% of all the abortions in Pennsylvania come from one county, and that's Philadelphia County, 40%. Wow. Well, so speaking high. of Philadelphia, um, I've been given the honor yeah. and privilege to so those of you that may or may not know, uh, I'll be the keynote speaker at the Philadelphia March for Life. Uh, that is June 22nd and then the 27th. Great. What's going on? 27th is a big day for us because we need to raise the funds for us to provide grants and then get that uh, advertising done. We need to raise the funds for sure. And we're having our annual gala and it will be on June 27th, and we'll be at the Cranberry Marriott, 
And it is what is exciting about this is two reasons. One is you are the MC, which I yes. think is, and truthfully, I'm, that you will be you will be great. And then also we'll have Seth Dillon there. And you're going to hear a lot more in today's show about what Seth brings. Mm -hmm. But I think you will find him to be one a funny person, but also just tremendously pro-life mm -hmm. and help us drive what we want to do. We have we need to raise the funds. We want to expand and we want to go to at least a couple more centers this year. Amen. So we need to raise the funds and we need people to come. And I, I'll be honest, I think people who come will find an extremely enjoyable oh, yeah. evening. Yes. I really do. They it will. is going they to be will. great. And listen, it's going to be an awesome time. We're going to give you more information on how you can be a part of that uh, towards the end of today's broadcast. Mm -hmm. So stick around. But before we get into our interview with Seth Dillon, if you might have heard of this man named Joe Rogan. He's only one of the biggest podcasters out there uh, in the world. And he was a guest on there. And I tell you what, he lit it up. Take a little peek at this video, and we'll be right back with our interview with Seth. You don't have the right to tell my 14-year-old daughter she has to carry her rapist baby. You and understand to that? To look that woman in the eye who's, who was the but born listen, of a rapist. Do you understand that? That's a 14-year-old child. I if you, a 14-year-old child gets raped, you say that they have to carry that baby? I don't think two wrongs make a right. I don't think that's murder, not, I don't I don't think think murder is an answer to... I don't think murder fixes a rape. What if we're talking about an abortion when the fetus... Like, literally, it's like six weeks, four weeks, three days... What if she just turned positive just now, positive for pregnancy? I don't. I, well, I just disagree that. What you if can, it just happened that today? You can like draw a line on when. You can't. Like, once life so you has can't begun, do, I don't think you draw At the very lines. moment, I would lay it out like this. I would say, it is wrong to intentionally kill an innocent human life. Abortion intentionally kills an innocent human life. Therefore, abortion is wrong. And I don't think any of the, I don't think any of the examples of like, oh well, how developed is it? You know, can it. Can it think? Is it conscious? Can it dream? Can it feel pain? So for you, it's the moment of conception. I think that if it's a, if it's a human life, an indis a distinct human life, then I think it's wrong to, to end its life. Life is valuable. Like, yes, and people have almost were the victims of abortion, and they weren't. They, they went on to become these amazing people, and we right. would have lost them. Sometimes it's a failed abortion. Like, there's people who have su survived, like, a saline abortion, and, they ha and they're damaged as a result of it, but they, but they lived, and now they're born. They usually go on, ironically enough, to become pro-life uh, activists. Oh, well, that's crazy. Yeah. That's wild. But it makes sense. I mean, if that's what made you. Yeah. Wouldn't you be a pro-life activist? Probably would be. Well, we are so honored to have with us today Seth Dillon, who is the CEO of the Babylon Bee, which you're going to find more about in just a moment. The world's most trusted, factually accurate accurate news source. He's taking on the tone of a traditional news media publication. The B satirizes real world events and public figures. Seth Dillon's experience with censorship and deplatforming has placed him on the front lines, I like being on the front lines, of the battle for free speech in the public square. He now speaks on college campuses and at conferences across the country about the effectiveness of humor, the moral imperative of mockery, and the dangers of censorship. Seth, welcome to the program today. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. We are so excited. You know, um, you said we, we love being on the front lines. And Seth, I know you love being on the front lines too. So, you know, we're all in good company here. But I wanted to first start by asking you to share a little bit about what the Babylon Bee is and, um, and also uh, what inspired you to create the Babylon Bee? Well, uh, yeah, for those who aren't familiar, we're a, we're a satire publication. We do news satire. So, um, I mean, in a nutshell, that's funny fake news, right? It's like, it's similar to what The Onion has been doing for 30 plus years where um, you adopt the tone of a, of a standard news publication and you write in that style. Um, but you use humor and irony, exaggeration, you, you parody what's going on in the world uh, and caricature it a little bit to try to make a point. Um, usually you're trying to highlight some hypocrisy or double standards or, or just behavior or bad ideas that need to be criticized. You're using uh, the language of humor and mockery um, as a tool to do that. And so I think it's one of the most effective ways of challenging bad ideas and exposing foolishness for what it is. Um, and so it's it's a lot of fun. It makes you it makes you laugh, but it also is thought provoking. It makes you think, and it's a way for us as Christians to to speak truth to a post truth culture. I mean, that's really why the Babylon Bee was started was to deal with this problem of 
of uh, there being a, essentially a, a war on reality, reason, truth, goodness, and beauty. And uh, a lot of that war was, it was being, a, a lot of that fight was coming from um, all the cultural and institutional power, including the entertainment and the comedy that we were uh, uh, seeing and consuming. There wasn't really an answer to that from another worldview perspective. And so the, the B was created to fill that void and it, and it took off and went viral right from its inception in March, 2016. And now we're eight years old. Um, just old enough for puberty blockers. So uh, <laughs> we are, uh, we've been around for a little while now. We're picking up, picking up some momentum and, and continuing to fight, even though they're trying to shut us up and tell us that we can't make jokes. That's right. No, keep the jokes coming. We like That's the right. jokes. We That's like right. to hear the jokes. You know, you mentioned about the war, and I have seen that. We have seen that. We have a uh, pregnancy care center, and um, Facebook shut us down. Um, actually, Facebook censored us. Google shut us down. And mm -hmm. so we really had to fight against that. Matter of fact, they said that the reason why they shut us down because we didn't comply with their advertising policies. That was the reason. And right. um, so people are experiencing this all over. What would you say to somebody that is experiencing uh, or have experienced cancer culture movement that we're experience that we're in right now? Um, how would you yeah. encourage them through this? Well, it is a big problem. Um, I mentioned the cultural and institutional power. It's all uh, it's all stacked against us. If especially if you're doing something as as controversial and radically extremist as defending innocent life. Mm -hmm. right. uh, you're going to have the cultural and institutional powers um, trying to do everything they can to stamp out your voice because it is, it is a radically pro-death culture mm -hmm. that we're living in. Um, and we need to try to do everything we can to push back on that and transform it into a radically pro-life culture. Um, but, the, but, but the way that we do that, one of the ways that we do that is by not going along with the effort to suppress and silence our voices. I think that one of the, one of the biggest problems that we have right now with speech is it, it's, there's two kinds of censorship. You have the hard censorship where they take down content they don't like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. We see that happening all the time, you know, where these platforms will see content up there that they don't like and they take it down. But worse than that is the soft censorship, uh, which I distinguish from, from that, where, where users uh, of these platforms are censoring themselves because they know that if they speak freely, if they say what they actually think, they tell the jokes they're not supposed to tell or whatever, whatever it is that's on their mind, um, they bite their own tongue and censor themselves because they know there will be some penalty if they, if they actually say it. And so it's that soft censorship that's actually doing the tyrant's work for him and is resulting in more censorship than even the hard censorship that they're, where they're taking content down on their own. That's the biggest problem that I see because if, if more of us are using our voices and pushing back and saying what we really think, then they would have to eradicate millions of us. They have to stamp out millions of us. But because we go along with it, we make their job easier for them. So number one is we have to stop doing the tyrant's work for him. I think that's the most critical thing. Um, and, that, and that will result in more people being emboldened to speak the truth. And the, and the larger numbers that we have, the harder it is to silence us and shut us up. So um, that's really the crucial first step in fighting back against this. And there will be, there can be potentially consequences for that. You can get censored, you can get deplatformed, but if we're not willing to pay a price for freedom, then how much do we really value it? Mm. Come on, that's good. Wow, yeah. that is so good. Well, you know, you are on the Joe Rogan experience, which I thought was outstanding. And I love the fact that you took a stance uh, the way that you did, because he asked, you know, one thing that Joe Rogan's known for, he'd known that he'll get all up in your grill when you invite him to your barbecue. So he has no <laughs> problem at coming right at you, and you brought it right back. Uh, tell us a little bit about that experience, and uh, was there any after fruit that you saw as a result of the um, interview that you had with him? Yeah, well, uh, a funny, funny background to all this was I did have a, a close friend of mine who watches Rogan's show religiously, like follows every episode, and I don't have time to do it. The show's too long. I can't watch every episode, so I pick and choose which ones I watch. Uh, but he told me, he's like, the one thing you don't want to get into with Joe is abortion because you guys are going to butt heads. It's going to be contentious. He's like, avoid that topic at all costs. So I was actually advised to avoid even getting into that. And then, of course, you know, Joe ended up bringing it up, and so we ended up debating it on the show, and it was, one of the, it was the most viral clip from that interview um, and I think it has had, it has had impact. I mean, I've never gotten more death threats than I got wow. after that, which is interesting. You know, it's, I, I speak about a lot of controversial topics, but I, I never receive more, um, hatred and more threats and more cruelty 
than when I go out there and defend innocent human life against mm-hmm. the culture of death. Uh, that is that is the thing that will generate more anger and resentment and rage um, from the secular progressive left and their and their pro death agenda. So um, that's really interesting. But uh, there has been some fruit from it. I think I think even even Joe himself came around a little bit at the end of that conversation. You know, he, he said, I, I kind of see what you're saying when I refuse to give and cave on these, ex, these um, extreme examples. You know, he brought up the example of a teenager who's been raped and has conceived. And, you know, you don't have a right to tell that teenager that she must carry that baby. Um, and then you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're layering one tragedy on top of another if you, if you use abortion as the answer um, to rape. And, uh, and so, you know, if anything, it's the rapist who should face a consequence, not the innocent child. And so he and I went back and forth on that. I think it did have an impact on his thinking a little bit because he was expecting me to maybe compromise and meet him in the middle somewhere. And I didn't, I stood really firmly on if life is ever sacred. It's always sacred. And, uh, and he saw where I was coming from on that with some of the points I made, but I, but I wasn't trying to change Joe's mind. I think more, more often when you're engaged in in conversations like that, you want to say it for the people on the sidelines because there's a lot of undecided people who are listening in. Um, and so we've, I've received a ton of emails and, and feedback and support from people who were influenced by that conversation. So it was, it was really cool. It was a God thing that it came up on that platform. Well, you know, I think it's outstanding because one of the things that I noticed in your interview is you're all, I think what, the, the constant battle is this. Pro-choice say it's my body, it's my choice. Pro-lifers say it's mm-hmm. murder. There's so much more to it, and you brought out so much in that interview, which was intellectual, that made him have to think, such as the question of uh, what do we call the life of the unborn? When does that mm-hmm. baby become human? When is it all right to murder? Two, uh, two wrongs don't make a right. I mean, all those things that make people have to think about what they're really saying, which leads me to my next question to you is, mm-hmm. can a person, do you believe a person can be a Christian biblically speaking, and be pro-choice? Well, um, <coughs> no. I mean, bluntly, no, I don't. And, I, and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, you know, the Christian view, and this is, this is the biblical worldview, is that God has created every human person in his image. Um, you know, he knit us together in our mother's womb, he had a plan and a purpose for us when he created us. Um, life itself, the creation of new life, is in fact a miracle, and we are image bearers. And beyond that, Christ himself, when, when God sent his son to die for the sins of the world, he, he sent his son for, to, to atone for the sin of everyone, um, all human persons. And so the, the infinite, there is infinite value for every single individual person who's ever lived, uh, which is an astonishing thing to think about when you think about that one person could be worth more than the entire physical universe. But they are. That's the, that's the value that God has placed on each individual by sending his son to die for them and, and by creating them in his image to begin with. And so, uh, the, you know, when you talk about being pro-choice as a Christian, well, that language, I have a problem with that language, first of all. Choice, yeah. what is the choice? <laughs> yeah. You're pro yeah. what yeah. choice? Exactly. Yeah. The, the choice to end an innocent human life which God has created in his image and for whom Christ died. So I don't think that you can be a Christian who is, if you're going to adopt that language, which I reject, pro-choice. I would say pro-abortion. But, um, but no, I, my answer to that is an emphatic no. That's good. Well, you know what, Seth? I know we were talking a little bit about this before. Um, would you mind speaking um, to the division between the abolitionist movement and then also pro-life because I've been seeing a huge uptick in the division of the Mm -hmm. two. Would you mind just speaking a little bit on that? Yeah, um, there is a lot of debate going on right now about what, you know, what, what, how exactly do we approach this problem? Because I I do think that those two camps share the same goal. I think, you know, the abolitionists have adopted that term and they say, you know, we, they call themselves abolitionists and, and, but I think the pro-lifers who use that, uh, that to describe themselves, um, also want to see abortion abolished. Um, they, they want to see an end to abortion. They want to see every human life preserved and cherished and prote- proje- uh, protected rather than discarded. So um, the goal is the same. It's a question really, the debate is over, well, what's, how do we best get there? 
what, what do we do to a- achieve this goal of the abolition of abortion? How do we make it not just unlawful, but unthinkable and end it altogether? And uh, you know, there, I think the reality is that there are situations where, um, uh, where compromise is necessary to save some lives because uh, you can't always get what you want when it comes to uh, writing laws and passing bills. You know, you have to deal with the reality, the practical reality of the situation that you're in when dealing with those issues. And so when it comes to policy and laws and legislation, um, it, is, it isn't as simple as just, well, let's abolish abortion, because that isn't an option necessarily. You, you're going to have other people who aren't willing to vote for a bill that would make abortion entirely unlawful. Um, but you can potentially get a bill passed that would save some lives. And if that's all you can accomplish at that time, it's still the right thing to do it. Um, so long as you're not aiming at compromise, you're compromising well on the path to abolition. Um, that, is, that is where I see the incrementalists and the pro-lifers um, taking a very pragmatic and realistic approach. They're not settling. They're not saying it's okay for some babies to be murdered. Um, they're saying this is what we can get. We will take it as we keep pushing for more because the goal is to make abortion unlawful and unthinkable. Right. Thank you so much for, for speaking on that. Amen. Amen. Well, Seth, we so thank you for your time and for your work. I wish I had a whole hour show, but I don't. Time is limited, but what you're sharing is outstanding. Let the people know I've got about a minute left with you. Let the people know how they can be a part of what you're doing or how they can find out more information about the Babylon Bee. Well, um, Somehow we're still on almost every social network. Uh, they've tried to take us down after fact-checking us a million times and, and flagging our jokes for incitement to violence and hateful conduct and any other thing you can think of. Um, but we're on X, formerly Twitter. Uh, that's our biggest platform, thanks to Elon Musk. Thank you, Elon Musk. Um, Facebook, we are still there, but our reach is dramatically diminished, so you may not see our stuff as much there. Uh, we do a lot of video content now on YouTube, so there's a bunch of different ways to follow the Babylon Bee. We're producing a lot of stuff. We're publishing books. Um, we're just continuing to try to speak truth to a post-truth culture, using humor as the tool to do it. So you can find us on any of those platforms. Seth Dillon, thank you so much for your time. We so appreciate you. And until June 27th, which we'll see you here in Pittsburgh, Keep doing what you're doing. We're praying for you, and we believe your best days are still yet to come. Thank you. Appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Well, i tell you what, such an outstanding man of God there. I mean, we so appreciate him, and we're so glad that he's going to be with us uh, here in Pittsburgh. I'm honored to be emceeing this wonderful event, Vision for Life. And once again, just thank you so much for all that you're doing and uh, helping us to save the lives of the unborn. It's like without the two of us together, it can't be done, but teamwork makes the dream work. So thank you so much for what you're doing. He's good. Yeah, he is. He, he is. is good. He is good. Yes. And for those the viewers, this is an opportunity to come see him in person because he's going to, he's really going to have a powerful message. He also does, he didn't do a lot of humor there, but he does humor in the presentation. And it fits so well with what Vision for Life, we do the advertising, but we have a foundation of that we believe every life is created in the image and likeness Amen. of God. And he's gone through that. Everyone has dignity even in the womb. And so that's, that's a really big connect with us, with, with Seth's, and so I think that'll fit very well. But I hope people can really take the opportunity. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a two and a half hour session, but you'll get to see Seth and talk and come up and listen to what Vision for Life does, yeah. because you guys will be there, our other pregnancy medical centers will be there, and the impact that pregnancy medical centers have. I, I want Seth to talk his stuff, but we can't ever let f- people forget how important pregnancy medical centers are. They are a gift in my mind from God, just like you two are because you're running one. So I think it would be very powerful for people to come and see that again, June 27th, Cranberry Marriott. And it's very easy to find information. I I think it's shown on the screen too, but just go go to visionforlifeusa.org. Very easy to sign up for tickets. But I think this is an event actually in Pittsburgh that'll have a lot of impact with a lot of people. So I hope folks will be willing to step out and come see us. Yeah, well, I know when we went last year, how much of an impact. It was great. Mm -hmm. It was great. I mean, I felt when I left, I was like, let's go. I mean, I had more fuel in my tank. So I would just encourage all of you, if you can, make sure you Mm -hmm. come on out in June to the Vision for Life Banquet. 
Yeah, it's going to be great. And once again, like I said, thank you so much for all that you're doing. Thanks for connecting us. I think it's up on the screen now. There it is. Get a screenshot of that. Come hang out with us. We're going to be there. Let's all cheer one another on. We can't do it without you. It can't be done. You may never go to a pro-life center. You may never counsel an abortion-minded woman. But you know what? Your financial support yeah. is more needed now than ever before. We need support, yeah. vision for life. You're, either one of us that you support, you're saving the lives of the unborn. We have to have your support and we need it now. So whether you go to Vision for Life or voicesforTheUnborn.org, come see us there in Cranberry, hang out with us. You get to meet Keith here and shake his hand and tell him how wonderful of a job he's doing. He's a <laughs> handsome guy. I mean, man, you need to come just check him out. You know, he's a handsome guy, you know what I mean? So we're glad to have him. They just did a little still shot on you and that's good as well. So. got the shot there. That's right, that's yes. right. Yeah. But We've got some things that are coming up as well. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for praying for us and making sure that we're we're um, on the top of your prayer list. We yes. so appreciate that. Um, so we have been saving babies continuously. Yes. And uh, last week we just saved another Hallelujah. baby with, of thank course, the, the help and guide and lead of the Lord. And so we also have, speaking of the front lines, we are going to be back on the front lines on. on June 15th, Come Saturday, on. June 15th at 8.30 in the morning. I know that it's early, but you know what I think? I think it's not too early to get in there right. in the game and help save some babies. Well, it's not too early to abort the babies. They're going to be open. Right. They're going to yeah. be down there. This is one thing you can't do. Everybody can come down, stand, and we have people that are down there praying with a microphone in hand, and we're speaking to those people that are down there, the pro-choice escorts, pro-abortion, pro-death escorts. We're down there praying for them and ministering to them. It is quite an awesome time, 100-plus campaign. 100-plus campaign. I mean, this is an opportunity where you can really get in there and help save the lives of the unborn. And I tell people, you know, especially the first time people, they might say, well, what do I, I've never done this before. You know, they might feel a little timid, but all you have to do, I tell people, all you have to do is pray and talk with the Lord. That is it. Amen, amen. And if you wanna follow us on Facebook as well, Voices for the Unborn, we've got a lot of great things coming up. The whole purpose, and we so thank Cornerstone for giving us the opportunity to keep you updated on what's coming up, to keep you updated on the different laws that are being passed. You've heard about us talking about the, uh, the, the abortion pill that we all are gonna to have to conquer together. This is where you get an opportunity to link arms and to be a part of the pro-life movement. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, there's never been a time more valuable than now for you to get involved in the fight. So join with us, join with Vision for Life, go to Babylon B, support that. They are doing outstanding work. And guess what? I believe that America is going to be pro-life in Jesus' name. Let's keep the fight going and let's get off of the front row and get on to the front lines.